You're watching the last part of our three-part series workshop. Here's a special message from Dr. Flagler. Hi, I'm Jerry Flagler, Vice President for Instruction at the College of the Mainland. I'm here today to introduce the segment on physical health. I'm here literally to talk about you. Professor Crystal Collins will be covering important information in her segment. And I want you to know above all, taking care of you will get you where you need to go. Your physical health is key to who you are. Protecting your heart, protecting your lungs, protecting your muscles, protecting your bones, protecting you. But what you may not know is that increased physical activity will also increase your mood. It'll give you a better attitude, it'll give you a better outlook. And in times like this, we can all use that. So this is Jerry Flieger, and I'm asking you to take care of yourself. Thank you, Dr. Flieger. We appreciate your support of PCK. To help us stay physically active, we have Professor Collins. Hello, my name is Crystal Collins, and I'm an instructor at College of the Mainland. One of the courses I teach is yoga, and I'd like to take a few minutes to explain and demonstrate how the mind and body are connected through breath and movement. The body's designed to move, and through movement, the mind is stimulated and functions at its best. We were not designed to sit or be stationary for long periods of time. And when we do, not only is our physical health impacted, but so is our mental health. Almost half, about 46% of all adults will experience a mental health issue in their lifetime, according to the National Council for Behavioral Health. There are some simple strategies we can take to soothe the parasympathetic nervous system, which includes relaxation and lowers our feelings of stress and anxiety. We think to charge our cell phones each night, but what do we do to recharge our mind? This can be accomplished through our breath. The practice of connecting the mind to the breath in yoga is called pranayama, which is a Sanskrit term, the original language of India, where yoga is thought to have originated. The Western world refers to this term as breath work. Through pranayama or breath work practice, we have the ability to increase energy, release stress, improve our focus and clarity, and improve our physical health. In our typical day, we tend to inhale and exhale using only the upper third of our lungs. But when we slow our breath and inhale deeply and fully, we force fresh air into the deeper part of our lungs. Exhaling slowly and fully releases any old air residing in the lungs. And by breathing deeply, we bring our focus to the present. We often spend a lot of our mental energy thinking about the past, possibly with regret, or thinking about the future, worrying about what is to come or what may or may not happen. These are both beyond our control, which leads to anxiety, and stress and feelings of being overwhelmed. Practicing pranayama allows our mind to slow down, become aware of the present, and gain perspective. The mind is like a muscle and that it needs to be trained to develop better focus and concentration. Movement and pranayama are the key. Let's begin. We'll begin by sitting in a cross-legged position. Now, if your hips are flexible, you may want to move into a true lotus position, which is where you cross one foot on top of the other. However, for most people, this isn't the most comfortable position, so they'll move into just a simple cross-legged position. If your hips are really tight and this is uncomfortable for you, you can make an adjustment by placing one heel in front of the other, sitting like this. So go ahead and take a minute, transition to what position is comfortable for you, and we'll continue. Now, as we move into our cross-legged position, I want you to just relax your hands on your thighs and go ahead and close your eyes and just follow the prompts that I give you. So with our eyes closed, we're gonna to begin to bring our awareness to our breath. We wanna inhale through the nose and exhale slowly through the nose or the mouth, whichever is more comfortable for you. And again, inhale and exhale. Now as you inhale, 
Try to expand that inhalation to a full four count and matched by a full four count exhale. As we're breathing, I'm going to bring our focus to the present and take note of the position of the body. As we're sitting in our cross-legged position, I want to pay attention to the weight distribution on both of our sit bones. And as we're sitting, we want to notice the balance between the weight of the body make sure it feels even on both of those sit bones. In many cases, we tend to need to cross the other leg over to feel more balanced. And next, we're going to bring our focus to our posture. And what we want to do is lift the chin to where it's parallel to the ground. We want to bring the ears back over to where they rest over the shoulders. The shoulders should rest over the hips. Bring in the spine into proper alignment. And continue our four count breath. And next, we want to focus on the transverse abdominis, the muscle around the midsection of the body. We can think of this muscle and gently contract it by gently pulling the belly button in. We don't want to squeeze and contract that muscle tightly, but just a gentle, firm contraction. And next, think about lifting our chest open to the sky, or lifting it up towards the ceiling. And the shoulder blades in the back are slightly retracted, which just means we're bringing them closer to the spine, keeping that chest open and those shoulders pulled back. Next, we want to think about the position of our hands. In our practice of yoga, we have a few options. If you feel anxious or stressed, you may want to keep your palms in a downward facing position, which just signifies we're working through whatever's going on in our minds at this moment. But if you feel free and open, we turn those palms up facing upward, which just means we're ready for things to come in our direction. And if we have a hard time focusing, keeping our mind in the present, we either want to touch our thumb to our middle finger or our ring finger. Just that gentle pressure helps keep us grounded and focused on the present. So go ahead and move your hands into whichever position is most comfortable for you. And continue that deep breathing. Now as you sit in this proper posture, with good healthy alignment of the body, you may notice it's challenging to keep your mind focused in the moment. One illustration, illustration that we use in our yoga practice is to visualize our mind as a giant black chalkboard. And on that chalkboard, all the thoughts that are competing for your attention, your to-do list, any anxieties, worries, whatever's bouncing around in your mind, 
want you to visualize yourself writing those on that chalkboard of your mind. In our day-to-day -day lives, we tend to try to block thoughts out and they keep competing for our attention all throughout the day, leading to stress and anxiety. But when we can acknowledge those thoughts, they have their place and they'll allow the mind to rest. Continue to write each item on the chalkboard until the mind is calm. Once everything's there, I want you to visualize yourself taking a giant eraser and wiping that chalkboard until it's completely clean. first few times through this practice, it's very common to have repetitive thoughts come back up. And as they do, I want you to acknowledge those thoughts by writing them again on that chalkboard and then erasing again until it's completely clean. And finally, now that our mind is at rest, we're ready to begin our practice. And now we're ready to move into our movement flow. So as we begin, we're gonna com complete what we call sun salutations in yoga, which are a series of asanas or poses that we put together in movement. The movements are initiated uh, by our breath, so that will determine the speed of the movements that we go. It's important to have no socks or shoes on when you do these because you need the flexibility of your feet to properly complete the movements. If you have a yoga mat, these are ideal to use because it'll keep you from slipping as we move into the ground positions. If you do have a yoga mat, move to the first third of your mat before we begin. As we begin our sun salutations, we are going to move our feet to about hip distance apart. And as you look down at your feet, you want even space between your toes and your heels, which means the feet won't be turned out or turned in. So make sure both feet are pointed straight in the direction in front of you. Now from this position, we're gonna pay attention to the balance of the weight on our feet, just like we did when we were seated, talking about our sit bones. So when we're discussing or, or contemplating the balance of our feet, we wanna pay attention to the weight distribution. Is the weight shifted more forward onto the balls of the feet where the toes are having to press into the mat? Or is the weight shifted more onto the heels? We wanna find a nice even balance between the two to where we feel the weight about 50-50 distribution from front to back and also from right to left. So once we're certain the feet are grounded and balanced, we'll continue on with our sun salutations. So as our knees should line up over the ankles, the, heel, the hips will line up over the knees. Shoulders will pull back and line up over the hips and we're ready to begin. We'll begin with our hands in prayer pose, our namaste position. From here, we're gonna take a deep breath in. And as we exhale, we move the hands out into mountain pose and continue exhaling up into a volcano. From volcano, we lift the eyes to the hands Inhale, reach back. And as we exhale, we're gonna hinge from the hips and bring it forward into a forward fold. Now in our forward fold position, the legs are straight, but the hands don't need to touch the floor. The goal is to hinge from the hips forward, and those hands can just dangle and reach forward in front of you. In this forward fold, we stay here for one breath, and with our next exhale or next inhale, we're gonna to move to an extended forward fold. And then an extended forward fold, the head should be in alignment with the hips, shoulders back, the back should be perfectly flat, no curves. So bring those shoulders back, shoulder blades are slightly retracted towards the spinal column. And with that next exhale, we bring it back into a forward fold. In this forward fold, we're gonna go ahead and bend those knees, put the hands flat, and you can step the feet, or you can jump both feet back into a plank position. 
as we hold our plank, we're gonna rotate those elbows in, index fingers pointed forward, all other fingers span as wide as we can get them. We wanna make sure the weight of the upper body rolls forward onto the pads of the fingers. And if holding the plank becomes a challenge, you can modify by dropping the knees. In that plank position, we want the body straight, nice and firm, deep breath in. As we exhale, we're gonna bend those elbows and drop into a chaturanga, and then press up into cobra with that exhale. Toes should be pointed back here, elbows straight, hips sinking towards the mat. A modification for this cobra pose would be to just put a bend in the elbows if needed. We rest here for a full breath. And we'll take a deep breath in. And as we exhale, we're going to curl those toes back under and press into our downward dog. Hands and feet shouldn't move. Stay in the same position. Elbows are straight. Legs are straight. Those biceps should be close to the ears. Hips high into the air. And from our downward dog position, we're gonna take our eyes and look towards those hands. We're gonna put a bend in those knees and either step or jump the feet towards the hands back into a forward fold. From that forward fold, we rest here. And with our next breath in, we're gonna inhale up into our volcano. And we'll exhale out into our mountain pose and back into prayer or namaste. Let's repeat that again. Deep breath in. Exhale, mountain, up into volcano. Inhale, reach back. And exhale into that forward fold. Rest here with that forward fold. Remember our breath initiates our movements, so we're gonna move in accordance with our breath. And inhale, extended forward fold. Exhale back into forward fold. Step or jump back into your plank. Rest here, full breath. Remember your modification of dropping those knees. Deep breath in. Exhale into our chaturanga. And we'll press up into our cobra. Toes pointed back, hips sink towards the mat. Hands are pushing the upper body nice and tall. Make sure the ears aren't scrunched by the shoulders. Keep those shoulders down, ears lifted. And curl those toes under, press into the downward dog. And we'll take the eyes to the hands again. Feet step or jump forward. Back into that forward fold. Inhale back into our volcano. Exhale mountain. And into our prayer. Now let's move into our relaxation meditation time. So you can move back into a cross-legged position as I'm sitting here, or you can lie all the way back in a corpse pose. A corpse pose in yoga is just where you're flat on your back Feet fall open, arms rested by the side, or the arms can rest on the belly. Either position that's most comfortable for you works here. So go ahead and take a minute, move into that comfortable position, and then we'll begin. So we'll begin our relaxation time with the eyes closed. And if you're seated like me, you'll pull that spine back into proper alignment by lifting those shoulders up and back chest open to the sky and chin parallel to the floor. If you're lying in a corpse pose, your arms are rested at your side, feet fall open, head rested into the mat. And as we move into our relaxation breath, we're gonna match that breathing that we did in the beginning, a slow four count inhale through the nose, A slow four count exhale. And with each exhale, feel the body calm, 
feel the weight of the body sink into the mat below you. Feel the weight of the body get heavy. As we continue to breathe, allow the mind to relax again, be at rest. And exhale, feel the body a little heavier as you continue to breathe. begin our meditation time starting at the head of the body working our way down through the feet let the weight of your head rest on your shoulders or rest on the mat take note of any tension or tightness you may feel in the back of the neck. If you feel your shoulders pulled up towards your ears, with your next exhale, just let those shoulders fall. Relax the muscles of your chest, your abdomen, muscles of the back are relaxed. Let the hands rest at your side. No tension in the arms. No tightness in those muscles. Next exhale, move your focus to the muscles of the hips, those thighs and lower legs. As you exhale, just release any tension you may feel in that lower body, keeping your awareness on your breath and the focus at that area of the body. From head to toe, the entire body's relaxed. The whole body is at rest. Feel how your body feels at calm and in a state of peace. Take another deep breath in. As you exhale, just slowly start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Bring the energy back into the body. And breathe in again. And as you exhale, go ahead and open your eyes. One more deep breath in. And as you exhale, remember you can come back to this practice again and again. Namaste. Thank you, Professor Collis. It's very imperative that we stay physically active during this current pandemic. 
Let's stay motivated and encourage students to stay physically healthy. The Physical Health has concluded our three-part series workshop. If you have missed the first two workshops, which consist of the nutritional health and the mental health, a link will be provided for you in the description box. Thank you for joining our three-part series workshop. Please take a short survey by clicking on the link in the description box to let us know about how your experience was. If you would like more information about what BTK is, please contact us at btk.com.edu.